So now we are starting our chapter uh, lectures on the age of confessional division. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to be highlighting uh, a few aspects of this chapter. Very, very uh, weighty. And um, I'm sure that many of you who read when, after reading the, the chapter um, were a little bit boggled and uh, it might have been a little bit confusing. Um, what I'm going to do is instead of actually just go over all the uh, um, nitty gritty and details that this uh, chapter does to cover the economic factors and the political and the intrigue of the monarchies and so many things that are confusing, I want to get the essence of this chapter and the important aspects that you need to have an understanding of um, that I think. And so, again, you know, you might find. Um, Shakespeare to be very interesting and um, you know I'll mention you know I'm gonna mention him but I'm not emphasizing Sh Shakespeare I'm going to kind of look into things that maybe you haven't been too exposed uh, exposed to as much so um, the topics from this section are the peoples of early modern Europe disciplining the people hunting witches I will do a separate uh, section on that myself um, and then the confessional states, we'll watch a documentary on that I'm going to have for you. Um, and then go into Ivan the Terrible in more detail from Eastern Europe, okay, or Ivan, Ivan Grozny. So, um, in the section of the book on population recovery and the thrive, and thriving of cities, that's also a very complex section. And uh, maybe not that interesting to you to see charts like this. Um, I think what is more important that I just want you to take from that is that while studying sometimes means of production, economic factors, and growth of cities may not seem that exciting. I mean, every once in a while there's someone who that's what they re they're really into that, but that's not what the majority of people are into, especially studying. Uh, history, but it, it does affect and maybe have something to do with the background to, to what we're getting to when we're looking at um, the conflicts that are going to take place that we're going to call religious wars. And, and so, you know, I, I want you to be aware that for historians, we differ on our approach to what we think are the factors that create cultural events. So let me give you an example. Um, we can study Christianity, let's say, read the New Testament, and we can read um, church fathers, study Catholicism and Calvin and Luther, all these characters, and then we can say, hmm, so how, how come all these people end up killing each other uh, um, and being so violent and having no tolerance? And what are in these texts that would reveal the root problems here? Well, it's not useless to look up those things, and in fact it's very helpful, but, but having said that, many historians, and I'm a person of this persuasion, that do not think that you can just look at ideas and that accounts for why certain things happen in the way that they do. Um, the ideas are always floating around, but certain other factors will be significant to push um, events towards one way or the other. So for example, you know, when you're looking at all of this, this crazed issue with witches and all these things in this chapter, and uh, hatred that people can show towards each other. I mean, just think about now. Um, ethnic tensions, racial tensions in America are often where you have some of the poorest people coming in contact with maybe lower middle class people. There's issues over uh, jobs, right? And uh, feeling that people are stealing their jobs, people feeling threatened uh, and, and having all these tensions that emerge that even though there might be people who have racist ideologies all along, 
it's those social economic factors that we can see that are actually the main contributors. And so now, you know, you look at, um, let's say, ISIS, um, this Islamic group in the Middle East that's destroying churches. Well, Muslims were ruling in these areas for centuries and they didn't destroy those churches. So what makes ISIS different now? Is just studying their ideology going to help answer it? Or is also maybe perhaps the, um, an invasion of Iraq and the civil war in Syria and these other factors that lead to this as well? Um, so again, I'm bringing it back to this chapter. Looking at growth of urban centers and then the disparity of wealth that comes with that and um, people shifting uh, um, in, from the countryside into urban centers and, and the way that, that these things are, are, are going to be happening are going to change family structures. They're going to make people feel more stable in certain areas and more unstable in other areas. And so um, many of us would say it's, these are things that we should be taking note of as we look to what is going to develop uh, um, in the further aspects of this chapter. Um, I hope this is uh, clear enough for you or, or at least understand this perspective, even if you don't agree with it. And by the way, you certainly don't have to. Um, that you know, There are these debates again in history as to what are the real causes are motivating factors for, for why things happened. And um, think about it today, it's the same thing. Same same kind of um, thing now where people will see the same events but they're blaming different uh, thing uh, reasons or they're looking at different reasons for why they ended up the way that they did. So, um, you know, that's why this chapter then goes into all of this um, discussion of inflation, for example. And, um, you know, if you look at even now, let's say California, it's much more violent, I think, in many parts than it was before. There also is an increased drug problem. Um, and um, there is infl inflation of rents. Um, maybe the work situation is, is worse. So you have these different kind of factors that also we see some people wealthier than ever. Okay, these are all things that are going to create a social dynamic that can be very complex okay um okay so moving on from that um we start seeing at this time that uh, christianity um once in the west mainly dominated by uh, the catholic church and already split from its eastern counterpart creating the eastern orthodox uh, uh church that's going to do things a little bit different and um, from there, there's all sorts of other uh, um, breakoffs. But in the West, you know, Luther really sets things in motion. And then we're going to see uh, John Calvin um, in America, uh, you know, Protestant Christianity, meaning to protest, protesting against the Catholic Church, is going to be a major religion. Um, in the United States and it's a way to look at Christianity and, and to say that you know while this when we read this chapter and we think my god these people are really uh, not seeing each other as one church one group of Christians I meet many people now and I have relatives that are Protestant and Catholic that do not think another person is actually a Christian even if they say they're a Christian and they're not claiming to be of a certain persuasion of Christianity okay so these these kind of divisions still stand they're just now not something that most people in the West are killing each other over although in Northern Ireland Ireland the Protestants and Catholics have been still doing that but also based on other political factors as well so um, you know you have the Anglicans, um, England eventually is going to break off uh, uh, and create the Church of England. And um, all these groups are in the middle of their conflicts are going to try to define heavily what it means to be uh, of this persuasion of faith. And for Calvinists, it's very important is predestination, the idea that um, God 
chooses the saved and you can do no works to be saved okay um it's something that that god just has a, an elect and and there's nothing you can do about it um the uh lutherans um they don't have as strong of, 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 a, of a reaction as that. Um, the, the Lutherans and the Anglicans keep a lot of practices of the Catholic Church, but they're going to have their own kind of unique things that they're going to do. Many Protestants, like Calvinists and others, are going to think that they didn't go far enough, and they're going to keep wanting to go stricter and stricter into just the Bible. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit more about that in the next uh, uh, lecture. Um, before we move on to the next topic.